Hello, my name is Ryan Bell and I am a senior. This is my sixth year in East. Hi, I'm Jenna Haugi. I'm a junior and this is my fifth year in Edelton East. I'm Kennedy Baker. I'm also a junior and this is my third year in East. So obviously because of the coronavirus this year, we've obviously had to change a lot of things in our school and through our East program. A lot of the projects we did this year were different. We had to change them or flat out cancel them. So uh, this year, some of the projects you may have seen us do annually may not be here anymore. We've also had to overcome a lot of problems. And honestly, in my opinion, East has really faced this COVID challenge. I definitely agree with Ryan. Our students have faced many challenges this year and have had to think outside the box more than they've had in previous years. One of our main projects that we've worked on this year has actually been going on since 2018. This is our sidewalk safety project. We got the idea for this project because one of the schools in our community has sidewalks in a two mile radius, so they save money for transportation for buses. Our school district doesn't have these sidewalks in a two mile radius, so we have started this project to get the funding to put the sidewalks in so that our students can have a safer way to get to school and to save money on transportation. We've worked with many people in our community, including our past mayor, Mayor Perrin, and our current mayor, Mayor Copenhaver, and also our past superintendent, Mr. Donovan, and our current superintendent, Dr. Kurtner. We have also worked with Cecily Cochran at the NEA Regional Transportation Planning Committee, and we have also worked with Regina Burkett, Craig Light, in our Nettleton district. One of our biggest challenges that we've faced with this project is we are in a flood zone, so we don't have the grant funding right now to put in these sidewalks. So we are looking for other ways to get this funding and to try and put the sidewalks in. Our sidewalks that we do have in the area are very beaten up and they're hardly walkable for our students in our community. Most of them can get underwater whenever it rains and they just do not work for our school. So we've started this project to also get new sidewalks for our students to make it safer for them to walk home every day. Some of the technology used on this project included ArcGIS, where we mapped out where new sidewalks need to be and the old ones are beaten up where they need to be replaced. We also used Google Earth to survey the land of our district. We also used Google Forms to send out a survey to our Nettleton district and the parents to see how they feel about this project. We also used Microsoft Excel to organize and visualize the responses to the sidewalk project. So one of our legacy projects, uh, we like to honor our veterans every year. Uh, we like to do a huge program in our gym and we like to invite all of the veterans in our area to this program so our students can meet them, the, the veterans can meet us and we can show our appreciation to them. This year, that was a challenge. We could not bring over 600 veterans into our gym for obvious COVID reasons. So we decided we had to crush this two hour program into a 30 minute virtual program. So we contacted media outlets in our area to see if we could get this on cable television, if we could get it on the internet somewhere, on their services, just so we can spread our appreciation as far and wide as we can. They said we can get a 30 minute program in. Um, so we really had to crush this two hour program into 30 minutes and that became our biggest challenge with this project. A few of our students had the idea to create a thank you yard sign for our veterans to show our appreciation for them. These students used Photoshop and Illustrator to create the signs. My dad is a veteran, so this really hits home for me, and our sign is still in our yard. We printed over 200 signs with Gibson Sign Mark to give us a thank you gift to our veterans in our community. The veterans were very appreciative, and we look forward to doing this for them again in the future. So our virtual Veterans Day program has been seen everywhere from in our local area on the news to all the way to overseas uh, veterans in Japan. So it's really cool to see a project like this take off and we can overcome our problems with COVID and still see our project thrive. We also created a physical hall of honor in our school so students could walk through that every day and appreciate our veterans. We also used our Osmo to record and we used uh, Premiere Pro to edit all this footage together to show to everyone on our Nettleton East Facebook page and social medias. Based on the feedback we received from our veterans this year, we know that this project was a success. Your Voice Matters is a project started by a group of students in our school who are very active in politics, who wanted to inform the students of our school about what's going on in the election and how they can be involved. The students started this project by interviewing the mayor candidates of our area and not getting into politics, but asking them why it's important to vote and why should our community be involved in politics. The group of students started this project by interviewing the mayor candidates of our area and not getting into the political side, but asking them why it's important to vote and why is it important to be a good citizen and knowing about politics. One of the problems we faced while making this project is our school has a no visitor policy. So we wanted to bring in these mayor candidates so we can interview them and ask them questions. We did not want to just FaceTime them or Zoom them. We actually wanted to meet them and ask them questions. So we had to face this problem. We had to ask for special permission from our school and uh, we had to socially distance, obviously, and we could uh, meet them and 
ask some questions physically. Students created a series of videos um, to release once every day for a week that would show what uh, the mayor candidate said and what they said about why democracy is good in our community and why it's good to be a good citizen and be involved. Uh, the technology we used to make those videos was uh, a pocket Osmo to record it, the blue snowball to get audio, and then uh, we used Final Cut Pro to edit this together and release it to the community. Another challenge we faced was that we wanted our videos to be interesting, so our students came up with questions that they would like to ask the mayor. So our students work with Carrie Tibbs, who works for the county, uh, to create a voter registration site for students who just turned 18 and for any faculty members that are not registered to vote. Um, so they could come to our site in our school to register to vote in our uh, election this year. Um, this was successful because we had 15 people come to our on-site registration. Our project hope looks a little different this year. We usually start with our Touch a Truck project, which is a big project in our community where a lot of people come out and we have a lot of fun. We had to change it up this year due to COVID, but we still had a lot of fun through Hope Week. We created happy messages with chalk on the sidewalks outside of our school. We created happy videos to show to the cancer patients, and we also partnered with our student council at Nettleton to create thank you notes to give out to the community. So this was actually one of my favorite projects. Um, Jenna and I actually created a video for Hope Week, which really brought me out of my comfort zone because I usually don't like making videos, but it allowed me and Jenna to use software that we usually weren't comfortable with as well. And it was a great experience overall, and Jenna and I ended up winning the video contest. Students also grew and got to use Premiere Pro and Photoshop to create their videos. We also partnered with Hope Circle and the NEA Baptist Charitable Foundation, and they shared their videos with all the cancer patients and survivors and all the faculty members of NEA Baptist and showed all of our videos of positivity out to everybody. We also went beyond this. We didn't just ask students what gave them hope. We asked community members around us, such as uh, members of the police department, um, our chief meteorologist with our weather station. And we released these videos on our social media to share what they had to say about their messages of hope. Our Raider COVID response project started as soon as our school shut down last March due to the ongoing coronavirus. So one of the first things that we did with this project, my friend Mac went to his 3D printer at his house and printed over 400 plus ear guards that would go on masks so they would not hurt your ears when you put them on. He ended up uh, going out in the community and giving these out. They'd get messages on Facebook. Um, his mom would go to her work. Uh, she would go out and hand them out to people there. That's one of the cool things they did to help with our community over the summer and when the school was closed because of the coronavirus. Jen and I also worked on this project as well. We ended up creating a coloring book for kids in pre-K through second grade using Photoshop. This activity book teaches our younger students the importance of wearing their mask, washing their hands, and social distancing. A group of students also created a video to share within our district to teach COVID safety. 